Hello and welcome to the chapter 17 uh, lecture video. So we're gonna we're gonna go through the these lecture slides. I'm gonna explain what's on them, kind of like I do in class, and we're going to focus in on some of the examples to help you out. We're definitely gonna I'm definitely gonna try to make sure to uh, tell you some of the uh, things that are gonna be maybe the most tricky, some things, some tips on how to um, work through problems without. Um, getting stuck. Okay, so this is chapter 17, depreciation. All right, so here's our learning objectives really quick. Quick. So this chapter we're going to have uh, four learning objectives. Um, and so the first one we're going to talk about depreciation and the me some methods of depreciation. Uh, the for unit one is the basics and, and unit two is going to be a different method. Unit three, again, another method it's called declining balance method. And then uh, unit four is, is another method. Uh, this one specifically we use for tax uh, accounting ta and tax uh, depreci depreciation related to taxes. So let's go ahead and dive in and explain first what depreciation is, right? So the idea of depreciation is we have this from our last chapter, right? Chapter 16. So we have all of our assets in a company and that's going to balance out with our liabilities and owner's equity. So how do we, uh, we, if we buy assets in a company, right? There's different kinds. There's different kinds of assets that we have. Some assets we buy th that are long-term and um, that we own for anywhere from you know three to five to ten to fifteen thirty years even longer, right? And so if we buy an asset like that, one of the things that we uh, do here as we do accounting for business is we spread out the cost of that asset over its useful life, and that's what's that's what we call depreciation. So spreading out the cost of an asset over its useful life. So uh, the asset cost, let's talk about the original cost. So it's what we pay for the asset, it's the cost that we pay, what we actually pay, uh, including freight charges. So if I uh, buy a piece of equipment and I have to pay to ship it, right, get it shipped to me, I can include the cost of shipping in the asset cost in total. So the asset cost what it cost me, the sticker price plus shipping. That's the total asset cost. So how long is this asset gonna last? Well, it depends on the type of asset. It could be three years, five years, seven, 10, you know, all the way up to maybe 30 or beyond. So it's just the number of years or time periods that the uh, company is gonna use the asset. So how long is this asset gonna be useful for? And then the depreciation again is going to be the estimation of the expense as that asset gets used up or deteriorates over time. So as things get older, uh, they get used up, they basically have a certain useful life, right? So the idea is, is to depreciate that value over the useful life of the asset. <clears throat> so accumulated depreciation is every year we uh, say, okay, how much are we gonna depreciate for the asset this year, right? Year after year, as that happens, then that depreciation that we, that we uh, recognize each year accumulates, right? And so we can look back in time and we can say, well, how much depreciation have we uh, recognized for this piece of asset or, or building or whatever, right? Piece of equipment. Um, uh, or building or whatever. And all of that depreciation in the past ac is accumulated depreciation to date. So there's this uh, a concept called book value. And the book value is the original cost minus all the depreciation that's been taken so far. So cost, the cost of the asset minus really the accumulated depreciation is the book value. Uh, the, 
there's there's a concept called residual or salvage value, and really what that is is after the after the uh, asset's useful life is over, it does it still have any value? Uh, it could be just for scrap, right? Scrap metal or whatever, or maybe people buy these old machines and and refurbish them, whatever the case is, right? So whatever that value is at the very end of its useful life, that's the residual value, or what is left over, right? Leftover value, or the salvage value. And and one of the one of the tricks is is that the book value can't be less than the residual value or the salvage value. So we can't depreciate an asset beyond its useful uh, residual value, right? Its salvage value. Okay, so that's an important piece. And when we do this, these calculations, that'll be important to remember. Again, the, the reason we depreciate is um, machines, equipment, buildings, everything, they get old, right? They get obsolete. So we need to recognize their useful life, hopefully before they become obsolete, get all that depreciation taken care of. They also just deteriorate. They fall apart, they get used up, whatever it is, right? Physical deterioration. So now we're going to talk about the first method, the most common method of depreciation. It's called straight line, the straight line method. It's the easiest, really. Um, and, and so what we're going to do with the straight line method, method is we're going to equally distribute the depreciation over the useful life of the asset. So it's going to be straight line, equal. So in order to do this, here's the, here's the equation that we use. So first we take the cost, and then we subtract out the estimated residual value. So this is what we think we're going to be able to salvage it, the asset uh, for when the useful life is over. right? Uh, that could be zero. It could be have no residual value, or it could be more. Right? It could be rather substantial. So we just need to take that cost. We subtract out the residual value. The leftover is the depreciable amount. So what we do with the depreciable amount now is we divide it by its useful life. And so that will spread out evenly that depreciable value over the useful life of the asset. So here's an example. Ajax company buys equipment. The company estimates how many units the equipment can produce. Uh, and so it's going to be able to produce 4,000 units. Uh, after five years, the residual value is $500. Calculate depreciation expense and complete a depreciation schedule. So the original cost is, uh, in this, is $2,500. So that'll be our original cost. It didn't actually say that in our original paragraph there. So that's important to know. Cost of the machine is $2,500. Residual value, again, we're going to take that out. So really, we only have left over, we have $2,000, right? This on top here, $2,000. That's our depreciable value. And we're going to spread that out over five years. So that means $400 per year of depreciation expense that we're going to use. So that's the straight line depreciation method. Uh, another way that another way to think about this is um, a hundred percent of the depreciable value is going to be uh, depreciated over its useful life we're going to depreciate every all everything that all the depreciable value not the salvage value or the residual value we're not going to depreciate that but everything else we're going to depreciate that's a hundred percent and if we divide it by the useful life then we basically get our uh, how much we're going to depreciate per year, which in this case is 20%. So every year we're going to depreciate 20% of the depreciable value. So the, here's a schedule that uh, helps us kind of work through this process, right? So we start off, for example, uh, with 2500 bucks, And every year we're going to be depreciating it for $400. So for the first year, our accumulated depreciation is starts at zero, but then it becomes 400 after the first year, right? So we've only done one year worth. That means the book value is going to be $2,100. 
the original cost minus the accumulated depreciation, right? Is going to give us $2,100. We're going to do the $400 every year for the next five years, okay? And our accumulated depreciation is going to go up. 400 to 800 right four hundred dollars every year it's going to go up and the book value is going to go down four hundred dollars every year so 2100 17 13 9 that very last year right we're going to we're going to depreciate the last four hundred dollars and it's going to leave us with right here there it is after that year we're going to have $500 left, that's a residual value. We can't depreciate that. So we're, that's that's kind of our goal is to make it at the very end of the useful life, have the residual value um, at, intact. Okay, so what happens? What happens if uh, we don't buy our um, new equipment or whatever building at the beginning of the year? Let's say we buy it in the middle of the year. Can we depreciate a full year of depreciation? So there's a rule. It's called the 15th rule. So um, we're going to assume Ajax Company bought the equipment, right? So we got that full amount. But it's going to be on May 6th. And we're going to estimate that, uh, five years, right? We're going to estimate five years. So for our depreciation expense per year, again, we're gonna we're gonna take it. It's gonna be the same, right? So it's gonna be four hundred dollars. But what's gonna happen for us here is that very first year, we're not gonna be able to depreciate it for the whole year. We're only gonna be able to depreciate it for the remainder of the year, right? Okay. So um, if it, it we. We have to, if, if we, um, that, that month, right, the way it works is the month of depreciation, if it falls before the 15th, we count the whole month. If it falls after the 15th, then we don't, okay? So in this case, it's May 6th, so we count May. So we've got May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, right? Eight months right there. That's where our eight comes from right here. We've got eight months of depreciation for this first year. So eight out of 12, right? That's our fraction of year. So 400 is our full year. And we multiply it by eight divided by 12. That means this first year, we're going to uh, depreciate it for $266.67. Okay. Uh, the trick is with this one is where what happened to that those first... Uh, four months. Well, in the end, uh, on that last year, we're going to depreciate it for four months on the on the back end is the way it works. This front end, we got eight months on that first year. On the last year, it will also be a partial year, and it will only be four months that we depreciate it for. Okay, so now we're going to move on to a new method. So the new method is called units of production method. So we can depreciate um, it, an asset um, by how much we use it, right? If if uh, a, an asset, a piece of equipment is only only has a useful life for so many units to be created, right? From the units, like a it's like equipment where you can dig so many holes or make so many widgets, whatever it is, right? Then that piece of equipment, if as you um, make dig so many holes or or you know drive so many miles or make so many units of production, then it will wear it out, right? So if we use it a lot in the first year, we want to be able to depreciate it more in years that we use it more. So that's why we have what we call the units of production method. And so it, the depreciation is totally dependent on how much it's used not just not on time so what we do is we we have this equation so again the cost here that's the same cost that we were using before cost plus shipping and, and all that minus the residual value so we're going to take out the residual value again and again this on top is the depreciable amount 
cost minus residual value is depreciable amount. Then we're going to divide it by the estimated units to be produced. Not by the useful life in terms of years, but by the useful life in terms of how many units it can produce. That will get us the uh, depreciation expense per unit. This is step one. Okay. So this is step one in this method. Uh, step two is going to be now we're going to take now we're going to take the depreciation expense per unit and we're going to uh, plug it in right here. That's it right there. Unit depreciation. Okay. And then we're going to multiply it by how many units we actually produce within that time period. So for a year, for example, right? So here's the example that we had before. Before, we were, when, we were, when we were reading it, we knew it had a useful life of 4,000 units, but we were doing straight lines, so we, didn't, we just ignored that. But now we're you doing units of production, so now that's really important. So we're going to plug this in, right? So we've got $2,500 minus 500, the salvage value, divided by 4,000. That's how many units this uh, piece of equipment can produce. That means that every unit we produce, we're going to depreciate uh, the, the equipment by we're going to depreciate the depre by 50 cents. There we go. So 50 cents is the per unit amount. That's step one. Now what we do is we say, well, for this year, how many units did we make? So we need to multiply that by 50 cents, and that'll tell us the depreciation. Okay. So in this case, we see here that uh, the units produced in year one are 300, right? So that's 300 times 0.5 is going to equal 150. So that's for the year. That's also our accumulated depreciation since it's our first year. Our cost of equipment minus the accumulated depreciation equals the book value. And we're going to keep going along. So year after year, we're going to say, how many do we actually produce times 0.5, right? That's going to get us uh, the depreciation expense per year. 0.5, there we go. Okay, now, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and, and do that all the way to um, our 4,000 units, the max, right? And then that'll be the useful amount for that piece of equipment. So the idea here again is we're, we're leaving at the very end the residual value, the salvage value on that. We also are increasing our accumulated depreciation as we go down. And we are decreasing, or yeah, decreasing our book value as we go down towards towards the uh, residual salvage value at the end there. Okay. Okay. So that's that that method. That one's pretty straightforward. It has two steps in it though. Now we're going to do another method. It's called the declining balance method. I actually like to call it the uh, the double. Sometimes it's called the double declining balance method, and I'll show you why here in just a minute. So we're, we're going to use this method to speed up uh, the depreciation in the early years of owning equipment or, or a building. Because in the earlier years, typically, they're uh, more productive, right? They're new pieces of equipment. We're able to get more out of them. So we're able to um, uh, increase or double the depreciation that we take on that piece of equipment up front. So the way this works is, is we use twice the straight line rate. So before we calculated the straight line rate by taking 100% divided by the useful life. That's straight line, right? So that's going to be 20%, but we're going to double that. So 40%. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to depreciate starting from the very front uh, we're going to depreciate using 40%. So double straight line. That means that's double declining balance method, right? So as we, as our balance or our book balance decreases, the depreciation for each year will go down. And 
and I'll show you how that works. Okay. So we're going to take the book value at the beginning of the year, which this book value will decrease over time. And we're going to multiply it by the depreciation rate. In this case, it's 40%. That's our uh, depreciation rate. When we do it on a calculator, it's best to be done 0.4, right? It's 40%. Okay, and that gives us the depreciation for the year. So let's go ahead and plug this in. And this is the uh, schedule that shows us how uh, the double declining balance method works. So we're going to start off, of course, with $2,500. That's our uh, asset cost to begin with. Then we're going to multiply that $2,500 by 40%, percent 4 That gives us our depreciation for the year. We subtract that from our $2,500, a thousand, right? 2,500 minus a thousand equals $1,500. That's our book value right here. Book value. And then this book value becomes, right, where we start. So we, we slide that forward, multiply it by 0.4, 40%. That gives us our next depreciation amount. Subtract it out. And then we get $900 in book value. That slides forward and begins our next calculation. So it's kind of a cycle that we that we use with this double declining balance method. And so we go ahead and continue that process all the way through until we get down to the very end. And the very end, the, I, the trick with this one is at the very end, we want to maintain our salvage value, right? Our salvage value should be $500. So we don't want to depreciate it, it beyond that amount. So at the very last, uh, when we get close to that uh, salvage value, we need to realize that we're getting close, and we need to take just the extra bit. So in this case, it's 40 bucks. 40 bucks on that last year will get us to the $500 uh, residual value. So we need to do that, and that is how we ended up. So one thing to, important to understand about this uh, double declining method, you do not subtract out to begin. You don't subtract out the salvage value, also known as the residual value. You don't subtract out to begin with. You start, go ahead and multiply it out for, by the full cost and start depreciating. At the end, that's when the salvage value is important. Because we need to do at the end we do this final little adjustment to make sure we get exactly the right book value which equals our residual salvage value at the very end so that's that's the tricky part of that one okay so let's talk about this real quick so this is modified accelerated cost recovery system this is it's also called uh, Mackers or makers depending on uh, who's talking about it right for for tax purposes this one's like the double declining balance method, and that is because you accelerate the depreciation in the early years with this. Okay. So our um, the federal tax law is really what this is set up for. And so the IRS has a whole table and, and a method that you use this maker's uh, tax table to calculate your de depreciation year after year depends on what the useful life of your asset is. Some assets, the, the maker's system and the IRS have specific uh, useful life categories, right? And then uh, you have to basically match up your asset with the right category to know how long your useful life is to uh, to be able to calculate depreciation. So this is these are kind of the, the key points here. So um, it calculates depreciation for tax purposes. So this is really the makers is for tax uh, purposes, right? Because the more you can depreciate, typically the more you can lower your income tax burden, right? Or your, your, um, your corporate tax burden, right? On your profits. You have more depreciation expense, you have less profits to pay taxes on is the way it works. Uh, it ignores residual value. Again, kind of like the double declining balance method, we're going to ignore the residual value. And, and with this one, you ignore it all the way to the end. You don't care at all about it. Uh, depreciation uh, in the first year, uh, right, right here, for 
is based on the assumption that the asset was purchased halfway through the year. So that's the way you got to do it uh, for for all assets. So that's just based on the assumption, right? Everything's half year. Uh, so there's different classes. Three, five, seven, right? This is how many years of useful life. They're all going to basically be a 200% declining balance, meaning double, right? Straight lines 100%. This is double, 200%. So it's pretty much like our double declining balance method. Okay. And, and then it switches over. Uh, on the table, it'll switch over to straight line. So the tables are set up by the IRS to tell you how what percent you can take uh, each year as depreciation. Then there's 15 to 20 year class. These are a uh, different type of asset that you're going to hold on to longer. That one is one and a half percent, right? Uh, or one uh, 150 percent, sorry, one and a half times, basically, declining balance method uh, before switching to straight line. And then there are these other methods, typically used when you're uh, talking about real estate. And that's going to be for uh, that's just straight line. So that's just straight line. So that's kind of the macros system. Uh, it's used for tax purposes. So. Uh, here are the different class classifications and what type of assets are in each class. Uh, then this is the table that shows you, okay, this is how uh, these are depreciated. Again, remember this first year is a half a year, right? So that's why we have lower numbers on this first year and then they, then they go up. Right, because that first year you're taking half a year depreciation, the second year you're taking um, the full, the full chunk. So, so that's something to remember. So these are the tables that you would multiply your asset value by to get your depreciation per year. And so this is one way it looks, right? So you have your cost, your cost times the factor in the table. That's these blue numbers here is gonna be your depreciation. And then you're gonna have your book value, of course, at the end of the year, right? Accumulated depreciation goes up. And book value, of course, goes down to zero. So no residual value on this. It doesn't take it uh, into account residual value for makers. All right, let's do some examples. So we got a few examples here to work through. So Shears Foods uh, is part of a Right, the $374 billion global snack food industry employs a lot of people and, and they're gonna buy a packaging unit, right? So they're gonna pay $185,000 for this packaging unit and then um, and it has a life expectancy of so many units, right? Uh, residual value of 46,000 bucks. What is the depreciation expense for year one if 75,000 units were produced? So how are we going to do this one? What method are we going to use, right? What is it setting up for us? This one's set up for the units of production method, right? Right. So we're going to grab all of the, those items. Of course, we're going to take our cost minus our salvage value. And then we're going to divide by the number of the life expectancy of units, how many total units is this unit's going to produce. Uh, and then that's going to get us our first step. That's going to be our per unit um, depreciation right there, 20 cents per unit. Now we're going to take that 20 cents and plug it into, for this year one, how many units were produced. So 75,000. And then that'll tell us the depreciation for year one. I'm going to continue on. Feel free to pause this or, or reverse it if you need to look at it again. So again, here's here's one with the bought a truck, right? Toyota Tundra, thirty thousand bucks. Estimated useful life is five years. The um, the residual value of the truck is five thousand dollars. So this is the, at the end of the five years. Assume a straight line method. So we're doing straight line with this one. And so the very first one, A on this one, is what will the book value of the truck be at the end of year four? And then B is if the truck was bought the first year on April 12th, how much depreciation would be taken the first year? 
So we really have two things we need to figure out with this one. We need to do a schedule for this one to figure out year four's book value at the end. We also need to figure out uh, on a separate note if it, if we had a um, our half month convention right going on, what is our depreciation for that first year? So let's go ahead and do this very first one. So year four, there's a couple different ways to do this. The easiest way really is to first lay out your straight line. What, what are you going to depreciate per year? So we've got our cost minus our salvage value divided by useful life gives us the per year depreciation. So 5,000 bucks a year. So we know that if we're at the end of year four, that's 5,000 times four would be the total uh, accumulated depreciation. It's easier with straight line because we just know what it is, right, every year. So we can multiply it out by the years. So $20,000 is taken away from our 30000 leaving us $10,000, right? So that, that one's pretty easy when it comes to the straight line method. Some of the other ones, we may actually have to draw up the actual schedule, kind of in a table format and work through it. So the second part of this, uh, half year convention, okay? So we know that $5,000 is the year amount. Uh, if we're not to April 15th yet, we don't use that one, right? So it's only, it's only uh, January, February, and March, right, that we leave out. So we have nine months to depreciate. And so we've got 5,000 times nine divided by 12. That's 37.50. So that'll be our first year of depreciation. All right, our next one here is uh, Jim Company bought a machine for 36,000, estimated life of five years, a residual value of 6,000. So first of all, we're doing annual depreciation. And then second, we're gonna get the book value at the end of year three, assuming straight line. This is kind of like last one. So it's pretty, pretty straightforward, right? So annual depreciation is gonna be just our normal straight line ca uh, calculation, right? Cost minus salvage value divided by useful life. There we go. So that's A. Then the second one, we're going to need to figure out at the end of year three. So it's going to be the 6,000 times three will be how much we've depreciated so far. Accumulated depreciation. Okay, so that's going to be, what's that, 18,000, I believe? So 36 minus 18,000 will leave us 18,000 left. Right, so that'll be the resi that'll be the book value at the end of year three. <clears throat> All right, got one more here. So here we go. So we're we're buying a truck here, um, and and it looks like we've got uh, three years of depreciation. So useful life of three years, at residual value of thirty five thousand. So first thing we're doing is finding the book value, cost minus accumulated depreciation, right? It's the book value at, after the first year. So we start off with 108,000. We need to find that first year of depreciation and subtract it. That'll be after the first year, right? So we don't have much accumulated, just that first year. So here's our a cost minus salvage value divided by our useful life. That gives us the per year amount. And then we're going to subtract that from our cost, right? So it's 24,333. That's our, that's actually the answer right here, right? This amount right here. That was actually the answer to this problem that we worked out there. Uh, annual depreciation straight line method. Then we subtract it from the cost. Right, so here's the cost. And that gives us the book value, 83,667. Okay. All right, I think we got one more. Uh, th this one here, right? Um, it's going to add a delivery van, so here we go. What is your five's depreciation expense using... Uh, Mac, uh, Mac makers, right? Modified it 
accelerated cost recovery system if one van costs $78,500. Okay, so we've got to figure this out, right? So the first thing is we're going to look to a table for this one. This one we're going to look to a table. Um, and we're going to look up the year five on the table of the classification for this van. So vans uh, are going to be classified um, on our list here. And then we're going to look that up, whatever the classification is, year five. That gives us this factor right here, right? So we multiply it out, and sure enough, there is our depreciation amount for that year. So uh, we're, we're using the table, um, the modified cost recovery system table on this one, Macker's table. So use that one on those. Um, and it'll give you the amount. All right, well, feel free. So on these, right, as you get to the end, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, email me. Uh, we can also set up a Zoom meeting. We can get you the help you need so you can continue to pro progress through chapter 17. For those that have taken the midterm exam and um, wanna discuss it as well, feel free to, you can set up a, a Zoom meeting with me and we can talk about your midterm exam. And, um, Best of luck to you, and we will see you soon.